Welcome to my apartment workshop. It's kind of tight. <laughs> workshop is in my two-bedroom apartment. It's in the second bedroom and that's in the middle of the apartment. It measures about nine feet wide and ten and a half feet long. That's about 95 square feet and this is my current layout. It hasn't always been a workshop. When we first moved in we treated the second bedroom as an office and spare room. But before long, I was piling up tools and projects on the futon and all over the desk. One day, with all my stuff piled up on top of the futon, my wife just said, why don't you just make that futon into a workbench? That's what you're using it for anyway. And that's what I did. It was a great idea. And this workbench was the first thing I built in here. And it's actually a old futon. I'll put a couple pictures up on the screen of how it looked when I was building it. But the base here is the old futon frame, and I cut the top of the futon off and built a workbench top and screwed that to the futon frame. Underneath has lots of storage for smaller power tools and some supplies. On the floor, I've got a small 4-inch jointer, some finishing supplies. In this cabinet, I keep some mechanics tools, screwdrivers, wrenches, sockets. In this toolbox I have some electrical equipment and up on the second shelf are more hand tools and several storage bins for supplies. I like to use these storage bins as they help organize categories of stuff. So in one of them I have all of my sanding supplies and in the other one I've got my hot glue gun, heat gun, and soldering iron. Moving to the top of the workbench the main tool is my miter saw. This miter saw was the first tool that I got after building the workbench. And for a while my shop just consisted of this miter saw and the workbench. When I first had the miter saw I used the original box for dust collection and hooked that up to a vacuum which worked okay but I realized pretty quick I needed better dust collection. So I built the miter saw dust collection hood. There's a video on my channel if you'd like to check it out. I'll put links to all of the things I talk about in the description. But this miter saw hood helps collect all of the dust that the miter saw makes. The coolest feature on this is the folding top, which helps enclose the hood even more while I'm making a cut to keep the dust in. In the drawer, I also keep some of my hardware. Not the greatest spot. I could definitely use a better spot for that stuff, but that's where those are. And just the dust box to collect dust from the miter saw. The miter saw is there where it is so that I can have the maximum cut off of either side. I can fit an 8 foot long piece of wood in here and almost cut it right in half by having the miter saw at the end of the work table there. In the corner, I built a small corner shelf to help store more stuff. I recently got a 3D printer, so that's where I'm keeping that right now. And then on top is just kind of a catch-all. Small parts, battery charger, some scissors and whatnot. So this is the main workbench where most of the work gets done. This workbench and miter saw were my only tools for a while and I made quite a bit of stuff using those. But eventually I wanted to do some projects that were more involved and the next tool I got was this drill press. This is a 12 inch drill press and I bought it specifically so that I could make my homemade sander. I needed a tool to drill holes that were nice and straight for pushing bearings in. So that's why I got the drill press and as soon as I got the drill press I needed somewhere to put it because I wasn't going to put it on my workbench. So I built a second table and that's where the drill press went 
and underneath of it I've just got some household storage in those cabinets and some blankets and whatnot underneath there, trash can, etc. underneath. The sander is a homemade sander. I have a video on how I made this, but it's uh, made mostly out of plywood. And it's got a three-quarter horsepower motor driving a 6x48 sanding belt and a 9-inch disc. Super handy tool and I use it all the time. A complement to that sander is my vertical strip sander which I have on the end of the work table here. And this one is great for sanding small pieces and inside curves. There's a video on this sander as well. You can find that in the description. Another video I did was on this tool wall. This tool wall is definitely essential for my small workshop area as I don't have a whole lot of storage under the workbenches or in other cabinets. So getting my tools up on the wall is a good use of space. I really like this concept of the tool wall. It makes the tools very accessible and easy to get to and very organized. I can tell exactly where something is or isn't and it helps clean up as I can put tools back easier. My favorite holders on here are probably the clamp rack. Very easy to get to those. And I really like my caliper holder as it's just held on there with a magnet. Super easy. And my bit storage is also a fun, fun little one. Up top, I just have another shelf for some more storage. Some rags, some paint. That's my box joint jig for the miter saw. I have a video on that, but that I made when I only had the miter saw and I wanted to make box joints. So I rigged up a jig to do that. Now that I have a table saw, I don't really use that jig anymore and I'll probably make a new one for the table saw. In between the two workbenches is the most used tool in my shop, and that is my dust collector. It's made from an old shop vac, and it's a thin baffle style separator. It's a little full and definitely needs to be cleaned out right now, but it's just doing its job. It's hooked up to my miter saw and my two sanders with two inch ABS pipe. And there's just some homemade blast gauge to separate each tool from the dust collector. I also have a port in the middle of the shop underneath the workbench and I'll hook up my dust hose to that port when I'm ever cleaning up the shop. That way it's kind of in the middle of the area and I can reach everything with the hose. Being an apartment workshop, keeping this clean is a high priority. So I probably spend just as much time cleaning up using that cyclone as I do making stuff. So that pretty much covers these two walls. The other side of the shop, which you don't see as often in the videos, is my desk. This desk didn't always used to be here. Before I got the latest edition, which is my table saw, that desk used to run the full length of this wall. And it was a sitting height desk and it had a rolling chair. When I convinced myself that I could jam a table saw into my apartment workshop, the first thing that I did was I cut down this desk, made it shorter, and I also made it taller so that it would be a standing desk, and that way I wouldn't need a chair that would take up space. And when I shoved that in the corner, I had this nice area in the middle to put a table saw. I have a video showing how I built this table saw cabinet. At the heart of it is a Craftsman 100 from the 1960s and the red wooden cabinet and black dust box below I built around it. It's got a John Heiss design table saw fence and I've added overhead dust collection. And down below I connect this hose through there up to my dust port under the workbench whenever I want to do dust collection from down below. I've also got a crosscut sled which I just store in the front of it. The outfeed sections of this table saw I made perfectly for the space that it's in. They're as big as I can make it and still allow enough room to walk all the way around the saw. 
one last area to look at is in the closet, which is where I store all of my scrap wood, which is not a lot, but there's some in there along with the clothes <laughs> and my shop apron. I store a little bit of sheet goods underneath the workbench up against the wall back there. So one of the reasons for making this video and shop tour is this is probably going to be the last video that you'll see in this apartment workshop. My wife and I are in the process of purchasing a house. So right after this, I'm probably going to start boxing up everything in the shop. The area for the new workshop is not too much bigger than this one. It's going to be a portion of a two car garage. So it'll be about the same width, but a little bit longer overall. The nice thing about the new place though is I'll have an area in the basement to also work. So I can put the computer and the desk, the 3D printing, the electronics, more of that stuff inside. So I can separate some of the work and make the outdoor garage area with the big power tools a little bit bigger so that I can work on a little bit bigger projects. But overall, I'll be setting up a new small shop. So if you've liked the stuff that I've done related to the small space in here, There'll be more of that coming at the new place. Thanks to everyone who's watched the videos of me building up this shop and all the projects I've done in it. Be sure to stick around for my next video, which will probably be at the new shop. And there'll be lots of new stuff coming for building up that shop and setting it up and building more tools and stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the new shop. Current state of the shop tool wall and the whole bench over there all packed up mm -hmm. there's a table saw somewhere packed up in there lots of boxes miter saws gone the only thing left to keep me busy is the 3d printer so we're almost ready to move